So, um, so Joe, you were in Japan anyway then. You've been there since January, right? I've been there six, since January, except I happen to have been back in California um, in um, last week. Well, just last week for a marine geohazards meeting of uh -huh. the U.S. Geological Survey, where one of the things we talked about was, you know, how do you prepare and estimate that, you know, possible danger from far-traveled tsunamis, wow. such as the one that just happened. Wow, so. wow. And and then did you go back to Japan or are you still in the states? Yes. No, no, I'm I'm back in yeah. uh, Japan in Sapporo. Yeah, yeah. And how far is that from where the quake occurred? Um, I'm not sure. You know, because the quake was actually 400 kilometers long. Oh wow! It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think the northern edge is fairly close to us, but still, yeah. you know, a couple hundred kilometers away. Probably mm -hmm. three or four. I know the seven point two that happened two days ago, or th now three days ago. Mm -hmm. um, we were about six hundred kilometers away from that epicenter. So if you count from the epicenter, we're uh -huh. some distance away. But I think that yeah. the rupture got closer to us, and some of the aftershocks were very sharp here. Wow! And, and did you feel the, the the big quake itself? I assume. Oh, was... I definitely, I definitely <laughs> felt yeah. big. Yeah. And what happened? Well. Right. It, it was um, moderate, so we I didn't get, you know, the furniture wasn't tipping over or anything uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. So what, um, it, it just, it lasted a long time. It started, and I thought, okay, this is an earthquake. I've, I've felt a few, not very many. Uh -huh. And it, it just kept going. And so I looked at my watch. I decided I should time how long it lasted, and it just kept going. And wow. I started to get motion sickness, you know, as if I were on a boat and... You know, and the whole, the earth was the ocean, you know, kind yeah, of. Oh, and geez. It, so, yeah, I really did get nauseated. Mm -hmm. Wait, you know, it, so it, it lasted for about three minutes, I wow, think. Wow, that's a long one. It was, yeah, yeah, it was, in reports from Tokyo, I heard from people who said up to five minutes, they, you know, they felt the shaking. Wow. So do you know how you're going to apply this to your studies? Uh, uh, <laughs> how it's going to fit in with what you've been uh, been working on? Just the, well, the fact it's a I don't know quake. entirely. <laughs> it's all still quite new. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There, there were events, large events like this in Chile and in Indonesia. Um, this one will be the best studied ever because um, because Japan is so well instrumented, and it happened in the daytime, and there's lots of videos and you know observations. Mm -hmm. um, although the tsunami did continue last night after dark. Um, wow. It's not just one wave, so the uh -huh. waves uh -huh. have probably uh -huh. kept coming all night, Jeez. and I'm, I'm sure there's still activity today. So, yeah. so we stand to learn a lot from this. Um, in particular, I'm interested in in the record that the tsunami leaves behind, and how that helps me understand um, sand layers that we find in the Puget Sound region, as well as on the outer coast of Washington and mm -hmm. other regions where we work. Now, uh, yeah. tell me again, what, where where are you? We're in Everett. You're in Everett. Well, yeah. I can tell you that I, I did a project on the Snohomish Delta, and there is a tsunami deposit there that's about 1,000 wow. years old. Wow. And also evidence of strong shaking from, from you know, prior earthquakes, mm -hmm. um, so evidence of liquefaction. And so, mm. yeah, in fact, um, I did a, a detailed study um, right in the Everett Marysville Tulalip region there. Really? Wow. And so a thousand yeah. years ago. So that would have, any idea how big that earthquake was? Is there any way to tell? Uh, well, we're, we're not sure. It's actually interesting because farther south, there's evidence for earthquake and tsunami on the Seattle Fault. Um, and the estimate is it's about uh, magnitude 7.3, I think, mm. uh, in that region. But, but a shallow crustal fault, so more mm -hmm. like the one that hit Kobe or Northridge. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. um, but we're not sure that's the one that produced the tsunami on the Snohomish Delta because, you know, possession sound there is that deep bay just offshore. And mm -hmm. it, it could also be that, you know, big landslide into possession sound might have produced that tsunami. But it looks like it's about the same age as the Seattle Fault event. So it looks like about a thousand years ago. Um, there was a lot of uh, shaking and rolling mm -hmm. in the Seattle area. Mm -hmm. and is there any idea of where it was centered, well, which fault it was on, or was it on the Seattle Fault? Or Well, the, the Seattle Fault definitely ruptured at that time and definitely produced a tsunami um, that's recorded um, at West Point 
um, in Seattle, in Cultus Bay, up at Whidbey Island. Mm -hmm. And it may well be that, you know, it it got into Possession Sound and and affected the Snohomish Delta. But as far as I know, the the modeling for for Everett and that area is, is ongoing. They, you know, that we don't yet completely understand how a tsunami will behave um, in that region. Um, and at the same time, or around the same time, the Tacoma Fault ruptured and a fault down by Olympia ruptured and the Saddle Mountain Fault over by Olympia, so, or uh, over by the Olympics. And um, some of those wouldn't have been as tsunamigenic. So it's probably the, the deposit on the Snohomish Delta is probably from the Seattle Fault event or something related to that. Mm, yeah. Wow. And um, uh, do you is there any evidence of uh, uh, of a large earthquake on the South Whidbey Fault? And and do you know when that would have been? Well, people have looked for evidence on the South Whidbey Island Fault, and as far as I know, although there's definite evidence of displacement on that fault, um, and the well, the Duval event happened, you know, on line with you know mm-hmm. with the South Whidbey Island Fault, and that mm-hmm. was what at five point four, so it wasn't. Yeah wasn't super big, but uh, I know on the on the Snohomish Delta, you know, it caused things to tip over in the um, the Behringer Farm, which I guess they've moved now from the right. Snohomish Delta. Oh, yeah. But yeah, we talked to the people there, and they told us, you know, the Duval earthquake, you know, caused some caused shaking on the Delta. Mm-hmm. Um, but I and there also is evidence out on Whidbey Island um, of deformation of the sediments that, you know, would have happened during an earthquake, but it could have been a long time ago. Like, it's not well dated. Yeah, right. So, so there have been no, yeah, the, there's, there's not evidence that something happened there a thousand years ago, um, or, mm. or evidence has not been found. Yeah, yeah. So we, so we know less about the history of, of that fault, I mm-hmm. think, in the recent past than we do about some of the others. Mm-hmm. So based on, on the... Uh, the records you do have of the uh, uh, the deposits in uh, in the Snohomish Delta and also the, the Seattle Fault, it looks like that those uh, that tsunami was more likely caused by the the quake on the Seattle Fault than something closer by to here, most likely. Uh, I would say <laughs> more likely. I yeah, can't, yeah, see, can't say for sure. Yeah, it's actually it's actually hard to say. Yeah. Um, below yeah. that deposit, we found a couple of other kind of thinner more local deposits that might be from landslides in Possession Sound because Possession Sound is very deep and has steep sides. And in fact, Mm -hmm. they have mapped, you know, submarine landslides in Possession Sound. Mm -hmm. And so um, locally, those can be, you know, quite dangerous. And there was was a historic event that hit, uh, what's the island, Comano? Uh Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Comano Island, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think in the 19th century. Wow, yeah. Okay, well, I'm glad you're safe and okay. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I'm safe and okay. A little a, fired. I've yeah. been up all night. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, a little more exciting there than you thought it was going to be, I suppose. Yeah, uh, yeah, I never anticipated this. Yeah, and so when are you coming back? Uh, I'm scheduled to fly back on the 31st of March if no, all goes no. according to plan. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I'll right see. now the plans are all kind of, you know. Up in the air. Uh huh. Okay. Are you available by email the rest of the day if I have any follow up questions or anything? I am. I okay. might uh, fall asleep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What time is it there now? <laughs> what time is it there? Nap. I, yeah. I, I might. I, I, pro- I might go back into the institute, but I'll. You know, that would be a temporary. Mm-hmm. You know, drop in my connection. Is it Saturday morning there now? It's Saturday morning here. Yes. Correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, but I think everybody. In fact, they asked me last night when I left. They said, "Well." Can you get into the building tomorrow? Because you know, every I think they're all still there. They, you know, they're probably not going to go home until Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well. Wow. So I'll, you know, I'll probably go back there and find out what's what's happening. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, very much, Jody. I really appreciate your uh, your uh, taking some time to talk to us. Well, well it's and, it's uh, nice yeah. to make a connection back to the Puget Sound region. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, and uh, good luck getting home safely. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.